Okay, hello and welcome to the DX Workbench today. And what we have here is the uh, the Daiwa CN901HP, which I purchased a few days ago. When it arrived, it was pretty seriously um, out of calibration, out of whack. The pointer here was way off scale. It must have got knocked or something, I don't know, in the factory, from factory or Friday afternoon special build, but it was just terrible all over the shop. And uh, I did a bit of research and um, I thought I'd put this quick video together because I couldn't find much online of how to calibrate this um, this instrument and being a um, uh, instrument maker calibrated by trade I thought I'd uh, pretty well qualified to put this together just quickly uh, to give you guys an idea if, if you want to tackle such a such a task and um, I did find a, a circuit diagram online not much information this one here is actually for the um, HP3 which is the three kilowatt version we've only got the HP which is the two kilowatt version but it's pretty much the same with the exception of a few resistor values is what I found anyway. And we'll just go through here. And I will link the description too, by the way, of where I found that. Uh, we'll just go through the schematic here just real quickly to let you know what to expect. Uh, with the switch banks here, we have uh, switch four, which is your average and your PEP, which is this selector here. And then we have the 20 watts, 200 watts, and two kilowatt selectors. Uh, your range, which is your 20 watt, 200 watt and 2 kilowatt there and the ones we have mainly oh sorry the potentiometers we are mainly interested in is this bank here which is the reflected power which is just your full scale deflection of your reflected power based on your uh, range selected and this potentiometer bank here adjusts your full scale deflection on your on your meter for forward power based on which selection you have uh, range selection you've selected being 2 kilowatts to 100 watts and 20 watts and likewise 2 kilowatts 200 watts and 20 watts and uh, we'll go through this in a second and yep i will go straight to the meter pull the case off and these are the banks here these are the nine potentiometers but we're mainly interested in these three top three and these bottom three down here now these top three are your reflected power so if you want to adjust your reflected power uh, that one there your first pot from left to right is your two kilowatts uh, next one along is your 200 watts and then thirdly is your 20 watts and the bank below we have for your forward power calibration now the first pot is your two kilowatts and then your 200 watts and then your 20 watts there so for example if i wanted to adjust my um if my instrument was out of i'm on the what i'm i'm on the 20 watt scale now so if, if I was actually keying up on the radio and it wasn't reading 20 watts, it was reading 16 or 25 or like mine was reading 12, I had to go in and adjust the forward power and it's this first pot here. And I adjusted that pot under a 20 watt carrier until I got full scale up there to, uh, to 20 watts on the meter there. Now, how do I know it's 20 watts coming out of the radio? You know, how do you know if your radio is accurate or whatever? Well, what I did is I got some other instruments here, which um, I've got some other power meters, which I know are fairly reliable. Now, we've got to remember, guys, that these are hobby-grade instruments. They're not, you know, scientific uh, test or calibration instruments. So there's a bit of give and take, a bit of averaging out here and there that goes along with it. So that's all that's to be expected. And um, yeah, so I'll just drop a carrier here. Here we go. Now I'm looking at my radio. The radio is saying that it's you know 19 watts as well, 20 watts approximately. LCD is not very accurate. But when I look at this here, I'm just I'm just just underneath 18 or 19 watts, I should say. So 18 and a bit. This my um, a digital says here uh, 18.41, and the old diamond says just under. 20 watts as well so i know i'm pretty much in the ballpark now if this was 20 watts or if this was 18 don't don't stress too much about it because you'll find that when you go down the bottom end of the scale it's going to be um, a little bit out there as well um it could be reading high or low or the opposite to what is at the top end i'll just release this power um now the sweet spot when you are calibrating um generally in the instrumentation world between 60 and 80% is where you should get your most accuracy. So don't sweat too much if it's not accurate at the top or down the bottom. So if you're calibrating for that sweet spot in the middle there uh, with all your 
uh, what you have available to you um, and just average it out and, and, and go from there. Now you'll find that the different frequencies, uh, whether you're on a 20 meter band, 40 meter band, 80 meter band, etc., is also going to give you a different calibration setting. So uh, again, being a hybrid grade instrument, don't expect too much, you know, out of a, a $200 device here, a $150 device. Um, uh, so just pick your favorite band or the band that you're going to use the instrument on the most. And, um, and calibrate to that frequency in between that 60 and 80 percent and um, that's probably about the best you're going to get it um, so anyway i'll put a link on where i found this uh, diagram and uh, hopefully this helps anybody who uh, wishes to calibrate the the the, the uh, daiwa cn901 hp power meter all right guys 73 for now